But if you were coaching a mortgage professional that was complaining about loyalty or the lack thereof with their realtors, and I often say, you know, if you don't like working with realtors, it's kind of like saying you don't like sex. You probably do it right? So it's not necessarily that realtors are the problem. It's that you are probably lacking a purposeful, intentional strategy or a campaign of strategies to push the needle where it really counts when it comes to breeding loyalty. If you're casual about this, you'll probably end up being a casualty. Welcome everybody to another episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast with the one and only Penny Rightly as my co-pilot. Excited to be with you on a very important topic today that is perennially relevant to any mortgage professional who's been in the game for more than a day. And that is how to get your realtors to become loyal referral partners. This might sound a little bit like the Loch Ness Monster where you heard about it, you thought about it, but you never see it. But that's probably because you didn't listen to this podcast episode. Because once you learn what we're about to share with you today, it's going to take it from just a figment of your imagination, just this Loch Ness Monster idea that sounds just kind of like a myth or a legend or something for other people, but not for you, and have it be something that you can actually produce reliably and consistently in your dream team of realtor partners. So excited to dive in with you on this topic, Penny. I know you've got some brilliance to share, so can't wait to hear it. Uh, thank you so much for having me again, Doran. I am super, super excited to jump in on this one today. Lots of fun. Well, I'll tell you what, the way the rave reviews and the comments and the affirmations are flowing in ever since you became a co-pilot on this podcast. I have a feeling unless you know something happens to you, you come to your senses and you realize, whoa, why am I rocking this podcast with this bald dude? Maybe I should you know, upgrade my standards. I have a feeling we're going to be doing this for a while because people have been loving the energy, the collaboration, the synergy. And there's something about that uh, you know, third factor when you have one plus one equals three, it's like, that doesn't make sense. There's a there's that multiplier effect. And you've certainly been bringing that to this podcast. And today will definitely be no exception. So I can't wait to dive in with you on this. Oh, that's awesome. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Let's do it. Well, let's do it. Screw it. Let's do it. So let's talk about the symptoms. Like, How do you know if you don't have loyal partners? Well, obviously, your own intuition and intelligence and common sense will probably give you a pretty good indication. But there are some symptoms of disloyalty that perhaps were on your radar. There are things that maybe you didn't even consider as part of what you would consider a symptom of disloyalty. So let's talk about that for a moment, shall we? Like, What's the really the um, buffet of suck, if you will, that comes with having disloyal partners that uh, might be quite logical, intuitive, and a no-brainer for some. But for others, it's like, wow, I didn't realize that that's connected to disloyalty. Let's talk about that for a moment, shall we, Penny? What, what are some of the symptoms of disloyalty that a mortgage professional may not be aware are actually bitter roots, or rather bitter fruits of a bitter root of just lack of disloyalty that we can start to fix and correct based on some of the things we're going to talk about today. For sure. So some of the things that really um, stand out for me, I would say is, you know, if you have locked in a referral partner, but you are getting, you know, really low quality leads from them, that's a really big one. That one really, really sticks out for me. Um, you know, maybe you were initially getting really good quality leads, but now you're not getting good quality leads that's a sign that they're no longer loyal to you, right? Um, and that that one really sticks out for me. Um, another sign as well is, you know, where you're feeling like you're that person of last resort, where they're, you know, they're coming to you and they're saying things like, you know, well, you know, this guy, you know, we tried at the bank already or we tried at XYZ lender already. You know, we've already been here, we've been there, and now we're calling you, right? Well, you're right. You really don't want to be that person of last resort, right? You want to be the first person that your realtor partner is calling, right? You don't want to Correct. be that person, but you know, you're you're the last person they're calling on the call list, right? Um, so that's another one. Getting calls at crazy hours at night, that's another sign too. If you're getting called at 10 o'clock at night or you're getting called, you know, uh crazy hours on a Sunday when you're trying to spend time with your family, that can be tough too, right? 
um, I think it's really important in this industry that we all respect each other's time. Sometimes there are exceptions and I will absolutely, you know, make those exceptions when the time calls for it. But as a general rule, you know, we want to try to keep it to business hours for the most part. I've always talked to people and said, you know, there's no such thing as a mortgage emergency. <laughs> you right. know, there's no mortgage ambulance driving around town, you know. Um, and so for the most part, you know, as long as a transaction is moving along the way that it should, there really shouldn't be a need to be calling someone at 10 o'clock at night. We should be able to have our ducks in a row. And as we're good mortgage professionals and we're serving our people, you know, there really shouldn't be a need for a call at 10 o'clock at night. Um, yeah. So, 100%. right. Now, there's, there's interesting to look at these symptoms because a lot of times we think, oh, well, I'm just grateful to have the lead. And we don't think that this is actually part of disloyalty because it could be that they're just not trained. So, we want to make sure we parse this out. Sometimes it's th that there's a lack of training, in which case that's on us to train them up. It's either coach them up or coach them out, one or the other. But if it's not, the fact that you haven't already set some standards, some rules of engagement, you've educated them on how, to, on how to do the referral, how to do the edification, the endorsement, you've already trained them on how to do the passing of the, of the baton. All those things are part of your protocol and your playbook, and they're still not abiding by it. And they're treating you like the last resort loan officer, like you're the one that gets the ones with fat fangs and talons and hair and evil eyes because no one else wants to mess with it because everyone's declined them. And they're like, well, let me just dish it to Penny. You know, Penny always seems to find a way to resurrect these deals. And Penny's on the last resort list based on the last resort scenarios. There's probably not a huge amount of loyalty there with the exception of like, hey, let's, we tried as best as we can to squeeze as much juice out of this thing as possible. There's no more juice squeezing. So let's call Penny because she is the master juice squeezer, but she's not at the top of the list. She's at the bottom of the list. That's lack of loyalty, right? So yeah. it's important to distinguish lack of training on your part, training your partners on how to do the playbook properly for optimal results for them, for you and for the client. Well, that's different if you're lacking that clarity and communicating that clarity to your realtor. That's different than not having loyalty and having someone just treat you like their last resort loan bitch, so to speak, just because they've got the real uh, mortgage professional, the real go-to, and you're kind of like the mistress behind the scenes and they kind of kind of keep it top secret. You're just like the last resort mistress. That's probably not the position you want to be in. So yeah, we've talked about some of those symptoms. I interjected though, is there anything else you wanted to stack on that before we get into how to breed this loyalty that seems to be so elus elusive to most mortgage professionals when it comes to realtors? Yes. I would say, you know, just that general gut feeling of, of feeling used, right? Mm -hmm. and that one can really stick hard, you know? So if you have that feeling like, you know, this person really doesn't feel like my partner, I'm just feeling really used by this person. That's also a really, uh, you know, high sign on the indicator light there. Mm -hmm. you know, hey, you know what? This person just isn't being loyal to me. I'm really feeling used here, right? So, and all of those previous things I said, the calls at 10 o'clock at night, the, um, you know, the being treated like you're the person of last resort, the low quality leads, those are all things that lead you to feeling like you're being used, right? And so um, it's, you know, it's one of those things to just, you know, kind of be aware of that, hey, you know, if you want loyal partners, there's uh, there's some things we can do to fix that for sure. So absolutely. Part of what can exasperate feeling used as well, of course, that we haven't fully been explicit about is when we get these rate shopper type of clients, even if they're referred by a, a realtor, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a slam dunk deal. Sometimes we can get a consistent low quality type of rate shopper, looky loo tire kicker from a particular realtor. So when we're coaching, oftentimes that's one of the things we'll diagnose. We'll ask, okay, where are these coming from? And sure enough, it's coming from one or two or three of these bad apple realtors. And it, again, maybe because the mortgage pro hasn't actually trained them, but it also may be just the fact that 
This is a bottom feeder realtor. They're working with a lot of chaff. Frankly, that realtor is kind of chaff minded. And so you're going to come with chaff when you're working with a chaff minded realtor. So that's something for you to diagnose. Is this someone that's worthy of your time, worthy of your, your investment, worthy of your life force to invest in, to coach up? Have you already done your best to coach them up? If you, are, if you have, chances are it's an opportunity now to just bless and release them. Bless and release them to someone else who wants to work with a chaff realtor. So you have the space now to work with a champ realtor. Because if you're working with chaff realtors or chump realtors, chances are you're not going to get champion level clientele, let alone champion level results. So with that in mind, let's talk about the three strategies for breeding more loyalty, shall we? Yes, absolutely. Let's get into it. Let's dive in. So what are these three strategies? And let's break down kind of not necessarily in any particular order, but if you were coaching a mortgage professional that was complaining about loyalty or the lack thereof with their realtors, and I often say, you know, if you don't like working with realtors, it's kind of like saying you don't like sex. You probably do it wrong, right? So uh, it's not necessarily that realtors are the problem. It's that you are probably lacking a purposeful, intentional strategy or a campaign of strategies to push the needle where it really counts when it comes to breeding loyalty. If you just leave it to you know happenstance, like if you're casual about this, you'll probably end up being a casualty. It's probably not going to work out very well. So purposeful intention is mission critical, but you need to know what to be purposeful and intentional about. So talk to us, Coach Penny, about what we need to be purposeful about when it comes to actually breeding loyalty intentionally. Okay. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Beautiful. So let's talk about, um, wow, breeding, (laughs) breeding the loyalty. So are we getting into strategy one here? Let's dive in. Yeah. Let's do strategy one. Kick it off. So I think the big the big thing I want to talk about here is meeting your realtor's three core needs. You know, whenever we are talking about working with realtors, there's three things that every time I've worked with a realtor, you know, it always comes down to three things they want. They want communication. They want follow up on all the leads they send you and they want their closings to happen on time. There's actually a little bonus one in there too. They want it to happen fast. I was just going to say, clear, clear communication that's delayed by a week is probably not going to, you know, even meet their expectations, let alone exceed them, right? So speed is definitely mission critical must. You got it. Exactly. So I think it really comes down to, you know, communication is number one. Absolutely. Right. So communicating with your realtor partner is going to be number one. As soon as they're sending you a lead, you need to acknowledge that lead. You need to contact that lead. You need to get on it and you need to let your realtor partner know that you're on it, right? And then you need to keep them in the loop as the process goes through so that they know what's going on, right? As as long as they know what's going on, you're not going to hear from them going, hey, what's going on, right? Because you're keeping them in the loop. So the communication, super, super important. That one is number one. Diligent follow-up. That is number two, right? This is the next thing that they want. If they're sending you a lead, they don't want to find out a week later that you haven't contacted that lead or that you haven't made several attempts to contact that lead. They want you out there reaching out, contacting that lead and getting in touch. Super, super important. This is what they hear in their head when that happens, by the way. (laughs) It's like, you totally dropped the ball. You're not going to get another deal from me. That's right. If you if you don't treat these leads like they're sacred and they're worth an invaluable amount of diligence of uh, it, all over it, like white on rightness, whiteness, if you will. Like if you're not all over this, like a fat kid on a smarty, uh, they're gonna just send it to someone else. If you don't treat the lead with the same level of uh, urgency that they would, then chances are they're gonna ditch you and replace you. Yeah. And then don't be complaining that they are disloyal. That's on you. That's right. You got to follow up like your hair's on fire. So you got to be on it, right? Super. Absolutely. But with a smile, smile on your face and pep in your step and sparkle in your eye. Try doing that with your hair on fire. 
I don't have a whole lot of hair to spare, but you know, that that's definitely saying something. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and and next, of course, is those on time closings. You know, honestly, you know, nothing is worse than having a delay to your closings, especially when we're talking about purchases, right? Because often when you're dealing with your realtor partners, you know, it's it's not necessarily just one transaction that this is influencing, right? Often if one person is purchasing a home, there's probably somebody else that's selling, somebody else that's buying, the next person's buying this. The domino effect. The domino effect, absolutely. So if you've got one transaction that's going to have a delay, even by one day, you know, you're going to have a potential huge chain reaction that's going to affect a whole bunch of other transactions. And now your realtor partner has to go and answer to a whole bunch of people as to why there's a delay on something. So anytime you can avoid a delay, sometimes there's delays that are have nothing to do with you. And of course, you know, there's nothing you can do beyond that. Sometimes there's delays that, you know, have absolutely nothing to do with you. But if there is something that has to do with you, do everything you can to make sure that it doesn't have to do with you. That's what's most important. And even if you do find out there's a delay and it has nothing to do with you, if there's something you can do to step in to try and help prevent that from happening, you're going to come out being a rock star, right? So mm -hmm. I've instances where I've had clients in situations. Um, we actually just saw one recently where um, the seller actually wanted to back out the day before closing. The seller still hadn't finished packing all their boxes because they were having uh, seller's remorse, if you will. They didn't want to sell the home and they were really hesitating, right? They didn't want to sell. And so the lawyer was jumping in. The um, agent on the other side was jumping in. Everyone was jumping in. And, you know, there was even concessions being offered. There was all kinds of things being offered. Um, and so there was a number of different calls being made. So even on our end, we were, you know, making calls on our end too, trying to say, is there anything we can do? Can we offer something up? Like even offering pieces of commission, like, is there something we can do to help, you know, in swaying this seller to, you know, still close on time here? And ultimately it did end up closing on time, but it's just the sign that, hey, like, we're not just going to sit on the sidelines and do nothing. Like, we're going to offer something up. Is there something that we do? Like, I'll go to their house and help them pack a box if that's going to make a difference, right? Right. Just show the signs that we're willing to help. Like, we'll do anything to make sure that that transaction is going to close on time. Luckily, it did. So that was wonderful. Um, but, you know, we see these things happen sometimes. Um, and, you know, the realtor is always grateful to see that even if, you know, it was something beyond our control, as the mortgage broker, um, they're just happy to see that you didn't just leave them to sink and swim and go, oh, you deal with it, right? They're just grateful that, hey, you stepped in, you made an attempt to try and help here. So they're very Yeah. What we're talking about here is being at the helm of the ship, if you will, in all different types of weather. Sometimes it's fair weather and everything is just going easy and it's smooth. Going out without going off without a hitch, easy breezy, a lemon squeezy. We love those deals, right? And then there's deals where there's serious storms, there's turbulence, there's waves crashing, crashing you closer and closer towards the rocks of the deal going sideways. It was sideways or derailing the deal or having the deal be delayed. So what we're talking about is captaining the ship, not being just a helper, a helping hand on the ship. We have to captain the ship. So I think we'd be remiss not to throw in a little bit of finer distinction around when a deal goes sideways. Obviously, there's some things that happen that are completely outside of our control. And the best we can do is the best we can do, right? So no one's going to point fingers at us if it's completely outside of our control, if it has to do with some kind of a uh, nuance issue based on the appraisal, or if it has to do with some kind of nuance issue with... I don't know, fraud on the part of the client you weren't aware of. We don't know. There's lots of things outside of our control. Yeah. But let's talk about, let's see, it's something that happens that was in our control. Maybe something fell through the cracks. Maybe we need to tighten up our systems, our policy, our protocol, our playbook. Maybe a team member was supposed to get the notification to reach out to so-and-so and it didn't happen. Lots of different things. 
maybe you were on vacation and something fell through the cracks while you're on vacation. That's where we need to be exercising as the great book by Jocko Willink, Navy SEAL commander. Uh, it's an amazing book that I highly recommend reading. It's called Extreme Ownership. That's where this book talks about making sure we're not blame shifting, we're not pointing fingers, we're owning our side of the street. What did we do or not do that we can own to take responsibility for it versus blaming the deckhand instead of taking ownership as the captain? So that's one side of the equation. The other side of the equation I've seen sometimes is where people cower and they procrastinate and they're in paralysis by analysis fear mode and they don't make the call they should make because they don't want to be the messenger of bad news and they're making the problem worse by procrastinating. All those sorts of things are great ways not to breed loyalty, right? So if you want to breed loyalty, it doesn't mean that you have to be perfect. It means that you have to be proficient at navigating from where the client is to where the client wants to be, helping to navigate that ship in spite of the turbulence, in spite of the storm, in spite of the waves, because you are leading the transaction well with fast, clear communication, with diligent follow-up like Penny talked about, and making sure you get to Paradise Island on time, which is closing the deal on time, right? All of that, at the end of the day, it's leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. You want to breed loyalty? Be a leader. Don't be a follower. Don't dismiss it. Don't point fingers. If you look at your finger, when you're pointing your finger, you'll notice there's three fingers pointing back at you. You notice that? Go ahead and try it now. You'll see it. And that's where extreme ownership comes in, where you own the fact that you're the captain of the ship and it's on you to get the client from where they are to where they want to be, Paradise Island, on time. So a little bit of a digression, but I think it's a worthy digression because we're dealing with the front lines of real life and we're going to have some turbulence. How do you breed loyalty? Not through perfection, but through proficient leadership, navigating the transaction well, and communication through that process is mission critical, not to mention taking ownership and taking responsibility. So we've covered strategy number one, and it's definitely a key part. I love how you broke it down to those three core needs, the three core needs being clear communication, diligent follow-up, and on-time closings. Let's talk about the next strategy. I'm very curious to know what it is. Yes. So the next strategy is to become irreplaceable by driving unique value. So this one's really important. So this one is about being more valuable to your referral partner than just simply closing deals, closing deals. It's about becoming so valuable to them that they just can't afford to lose you, right? So this is where you are essentially becoming their partner. You are the person that is helping them get business. You're teaching them how to close more deals. You're doing things like co-branding with them, perhaps. You're doing things like sharing leads with them. You're doing things like... um uh, helping them streamline their processes, maybe showing them how to use their CRMs, things like that. You're doing things that are helping them grow their business. And when you do those types of things with your realtor partners, instead of just saying, hey, do you have a lead for me so I can close your next deal? You know, instead of just being that person, instead you're saying, hey, guess what? Here's a cool thing that's working for me in my business. I bet it would work in your business too. Do you want to get together and I'll show you how to do it? And now let's show you how to grow your business. You're going to get some new deals out of this. And those new deals, I'm going to help you close. That's how we're going to do some business together. You're going to become so valuable to that person. They're never going to want to let you go. That's going to breed like unconscionable amounts of loyalty, right? Because Absolutely. You're just going to be that person that they just can't afford to let go. And that is... Awesome. Awesomeness. <laughs> I call it pain of disconnect. It's like if you're in a boat and you're scuba diving and you're diving in with your tank, and but this is a unique tank. It's not a freestanding tank where you can swim anywhere. This is a tank that has an oxygen line 
to the source of the oxygen at the top of the boat. So as you dive deeper and deeper, you're still connected to your source of oxygen in the boat. Now, imagine if someone was to turn off the valve to that oxygen. That's what I call pain of disconnect, right? So if you're just a lone leech, a mortgage parasite, and you're just waiting for handouts, kind of like the dog begging at the table for a crumb to be flicked off the edge, then obviously you're deserving of 0.0 loyalty because you're irreplaceable and indispensable. But what if you're showing the realtor by showing up as a partner, as a leader versus a parasite, you're showing the realtor different ways to push the needle on profit and performance, optimize lead conversion, generate more leads, get better quality leads, get more referrals, turn more referrals into red hot, ref, you know, get, get more rave reviews, turn those reviews into red hot referrals. That's what I meant to say. And all these different you know, creative ways to help them grow their business. So you're not just taking a piece of the pie, you're expanding the size of the pie, right? So the pie is bigger now because of you, because of your leadership, your ingenuity, your creativity, your innovation. And now you are not just a mortgage professional, you're a partner, you're a problem solver. You're helping them produce more than they would have otherwise. So when you look at what you bring to your current realtor, are you just a replaceable cog in the wheel as a mortgage hawker? Or are you a real robust problem solver where you're creating so many real unique value solutions to their various problems in their business and you're doing it with speed, you're doing it with finesse, you're doing it with effectiveness, you're doing it with pep in your step, sparkle in your eye, smile on your face, a can-do attitude, Versus do I have to, right? That's initiative because your can do is more important. Your, your, uh, what is the, the saying goes, your can do is more important than your IQ. That was the saying that I heard recently on a podcast. I love that. Your can do is more important than your IQ. So these are things you can do. The question is, are you able to do it in a way that doesn't just meet your realtor's expectations and exceeds them? Like you're exceeding their expectations. We heard from a client recently that has doubled, tripled, quadrupled his income since earlier this year, thanks to some of the things we've been doing with them when it comes to teaching them the secret sauce to attract top producing realtor partners. And he was saying how he took a top producing realtor from not knowing him from the hole in the wall to sending him all his business all the time as the go-to mortgage professional, which is not an easy thing to do with top producers. If you hadn't noticed by now, he was able to do that because of the leadership, the confidence, the mojo, the process that he brings to help his clients and the realtor's clients, of course, get that five-star experience such that there's more repeat business, more referral business, more rave reviews. But he said, one of the things that actually blew his realtor away is that he was able to go from lead to pre-approval in less than 24 hours. And to be able to produce an expectation from a client where it goes from wow to let's keep this going. I'm going to keep sending you every single deal every time because I'm so wowed by this. I never want to stop. It's like once they get a taste of great, they're never going to want to settle for good. So what if you could be that kind of problem solver? What kind of loyalty could you breed? And what if you were to create systems and playbooks in your business such that that was a repeatable process versus just a one-off wonder? And it's the repeatable process that has them stick to you like super glue. Yes. That's where, that's where the magic happens. Absolutely. It's building that reputation. It's building that trust. And it's them seeing you as like, you are the wonder kid. The stuff you pull off, I've never seen this before. I've never worked with a mortgage professional who delivers like you deliver. You don't just deliver on loans. You help me grow my business. You are the example worthy of emulation. I want to follow. I want to become more like you. I want more of your winning mindset. I want more of your can-do attitude. I want more of your you know, marketing prowess, what you got in store, I want more. When they're saying that in their head and heart, 
and you go from their head to their heart. It's just a matter of time until you go from head share, heart share, and then referral share. That's how it works. You got it. So let's talk about the third one, shall we? What's the third one? So the third one might actually be one that is perhaps a little bit unexpected, but it actually works beautifully. And it's one of my favorites. So strategy number three is be a one-stop shop problem solver. So by that, what I mean by that is most of the time as mortgage professionals, we want to be the one that solves all the problems. We want to be the one we get the deal, we solve the deal, and we are handling um, all of the tricky situations. And this is good. You want to handle as many tricky situations as you can. But once in a while, you're going to get a deal across your desk that you just can't fix. You just can't be the one to solve that problem. But you want to be the person who knows who can get it done. And that's the trick. If you know, who else can get it done? So maybe you can't do it with the products and services that you offer, but you know somebody down the street who can be the first to say to your referral partner, you know what, John or Joe or Sally, I can't, I can't get this done, but you know what, Bobby down the street can get it done. So that's who you need to call. Call him right now. He'll get it done for you. I promise you he's going to get it done for you. And you know what? You are going to be a rock star in their eyes. And no matter what, your referral partner is always, always, always going to come back to you because you have the answer. doesn't matter that you couldn't, you know, get maybe that one loan done for them. It's the fact that you had the answer. You pointed them in the direction they needed to go. And because of that, you're making that connection. You're their connector. You're connecting them with who they need to go to that person is going to be your referral partner for life because you always have their answer. And that is pure gold for them. So that's- Absolutely. It's like the saying, your network is your net worth. You got it. You are poster child of connecting, collaborating, the ability to create relationships and plug people in to- various different superpowers that people have that you may not have. For you, it might be like a complete weakness, but you're, you're always uh, celebrating, appreciating uh, other people's superpowers and then connecting people who need those super- superpowers because there's something about your heart, your soul, your spirit, I can tell, that genuinely loves helping people. And it doesn't matter whether it comes directly from you. All you care about is that someone's problem solved someone is helped, someone gets out of the problem and into the solution. And that's an amazing thing because not only does it help people get to the outcome and get them out of the suck of the problem, uh, but it also creates this sense of genuine honesty where it's like, I don't have all the answers, but it's the shameless sense of, I don't need to have all the answers. I just have the right Rolodex with the right people in it. And when you have that kind of philosophy, I think it breeds a lot more trust because they know that when you say you have the answers, they know that's true because there's a backdrop of also certain times and situations where you also acknowledge, I don't have the answer. I don't have the solution. I don't have the best option, but here is the best option. And because I have your best interest in mind, I'm going to connect you to that best option, even if it means skipping over my head to go to someone else who's better suited and a better fit for what you're looking for. Have you found that to be true? Absolutely. A hundred percent. So, and you know, it's, it's like that pay it forward concept, right? You know, it's, it's send it where it needs to go because it always going to come back to you tenfold, right? It's make the right decision, do the right thing, do what's right for that client, do what's right for your referral partner. Um, in serving that client in the right way. And it's always going to come back to you tenfold. And then you end up with that referral partner continuing to just come back to you again and again and again, and you get their loyalty, right? So Absolutely. And that's, again, a big part of everything we talked about. If we were to select one word that's like the golden thread that's woven through everything we've talked about today, it's trust. Cultivating trust, right? When you say it, you do it. 
When you have a meeting, you show up on time. When you have a closing, you do all in your power to make sure it closes on time or early. People can count on you. When you can't, when you don't have the best solution, you refer to something else or someone else who does have the best solution. Your word is bond. When you say you're going to do something, you do it. Now, we're human. We're going to let things fall through the cracks. And that's, again, a big part of that extreme ownership is taking ownership when we do fumble and not shirking that responsibility. Again, building trust, right? Yeah. So everything we're talking about is how can I bring value to this person because I genuinely care. It's like we often say here on Planet Prosper, you can't be half pregnant. You either care or you don't. And if you don't really care, then none of what we just talked about today is really going to be relevant to you because all of this requires you to really care. Yeah. And one of the things that has made you, Penny, successful, if you don't mind me just kind of giving a little bit of a bird's eye perspective, being in the coaching space for 20 years, coaching hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mortgage professionals over two decades, I've noticed, of course, that success leaves clues. You're certainly no exception. One of the reasons why you've been so successful is because you really care. Like you care to your core. The caring that you have oozes out of your pores. It, it shows up in everything you do. The excellence for excellence sake, the punctuality, the, to deliver the best of my ability every time, um, the, the leadership you bring, the conviction, the certainty, the confidence you bring, uh, the compassion, the empathy, the caring you bring, like all of that stuff really sources from really caring about people. So if I was to just add one more bonus point, if uh, I can call it that, every day, out of everything we've talked about today, it'd be just remind yourself your biggest superpower is caring. And how can you show you really care through initiative, through integrity, through ingenuity, through your leadership, to not just meet these realtors' expectations. Don't set your standards so low. That's mediocrity. Set up your system, set up your playbook such that you exceed their expectations because you have higher standards for yourself than anyone else would put on you. You look at champions in any walk of life, whether it be in athletics or in the arts, whether it be like Michael Jordan or any of the like elite of the elite champion athletes, one of the things you'll notice is they set higher standards for themselves than anyone else would. They wake up earlier, they train longer, they train with more rigor, they you know, will put in more effort, more diligence, more work than anyone else would ever even think to put on them. That's the way of the champion. And when you deliver that in your client experience, when you deliver that to your partners, when you show up as that kind of leader, navigating the client and the realtor to the outcome of a closed deal that delivers five-star experience and repeat and referral business and rave reviews, and you're able to do that consistently, that's why you have your partners stick you like super glue and send you all their business all the time. So there's my rant. People were like complaining last time. Dorn, you haven't done a rant in a while. I'm sorry we we'll took money back. I'm here for you. <laughs> so, it's your rant. You can complain no longer. I gave it to you. So you're welcome. That's incredible. Yeah. So as we wrap up here, guys, there's a lot that we've talked about. Penny, is there anything else before we uh, pivot to wrap up today that you think would be an important thing for everyone to remember when it comes to breeding more loyalty with their partners? Um, you know, I think to just wrap everything up with a pretty little bow here, um, I would honestly say it's so important that you remember to, to also be yourself, right? Mm-hmm. You know, try to be more than we are or try to be someone we're not that's going to shine through, right? If you are just be yourself and be, um, you know, and, and own up to every, like what you were saying earlier too, you know, own all of your actions, right? The mistakes, but the good things too, like own all of your actions, right? I think though, you know, having that integrity is super, super important, right? Um, 
So be yourself, have integrity, own your actions. All of those things are important, right? And if you're working with the right partners, they're going to appreciate those things about you, right? For sure. Yeah, I think that that's really, really important. And if you show that you care and you show that you've got the interests of your uh, clients, their clients um, at heart, then that's going to really shine through. Yeah, and you remind me of a couple other things in these brilliant wrap up, uh, tied in a nice tidy bow, uh, comments you just meant uh, or just shared. You reminded me of a couple additional things that are, I think, worthy of stacking. Uh, one of them is to remind the client when something doesn't go their way, that when they're committed, there's always a way to remind them, hey, this is a hiccup. This is a challenge. This is a, this is not a roadblock. It might be a uh, a little bit of a slowdown, but it's not going to hold you down if you're committed. If you're committed, there's always a way. And then show them how to get to the outcome versus, oh man, this happened. Oh man, this sucks. And start complaining about it. This is terrible. Yeah, this is called real life. But what is the outcome and are they committed to it? And if they are, show them the way and give them that certainty that you can get them there by your clear, concise leadership and showing them that there's always a way when you're committed. Another thing that's really powerful is handwritten cards. You'd be surprised how surprise gifts and handwritten cards can go such a long way to breeding loyalty, not just with your partners, but also with your clients, right? At these milestones, whether it be, hey, you got a your first referral from your referral partner and you send a, a, a thank you card to your realtor, thanking them from the heart, that goes a long way. Uh, maybe it's a modest, small little gift as a token of your appreciation. That goes a long way. It doesn't have to be anything lavish, but thoughtfulness, appreciation, right? What we appreciate, appreciates. So the more you can, again, think outside the box of how can I really appreciate people? How can I honor them? How can I show thoughtfulness? How can I make them feel special? Those things go a long way. People generally don't dump people that they feel honored by, that they feel make them feel special, that delight them with thoughtfulness. Like the chance of them dumping you like a hot potato is slim to none if you're constantly bringing gratitude, appreciation, thoughtfulness, and you're delighting them with things to remind them how much you love, appreciate, and honor them. Like game on. They're going to be. Again, a partner for life because you show up like no one else does. So if you're listening to this, you're watching this, you're like, Dorn and Penny, these are some great reminders. Uh, and again, we often need reminding more than we need educating. So a big part of this is indeed reminders. But you're like, I need not just to breed more loyalty. I need to cultivate more partnerships. I have partners, but you know they're the struggle bunnies. They're the part-timers. Uh, they're on the verge of having to go back to selling solar and driving Uber because it's been two and a half years of relatively high rates, low inventory, hyper competition. And it's just been a really tough season for my partners. And they just don't have the business to give. And it's like trying to squeeze water out of a rock. Good luck with that. It's not going very well. I, my business is tanked because... I've hitched my wagon to the struggle bunnies, the part-timers, and the mediocre middle. If that's you and you're like, Doran, Penny, I need a game plan to get better quality partners who I can breathe loyalty with and apply these strategies where I can get one, two, three deals a month, not just one, two, three deals a year from that kind of a partner. And if that's you, that's 100% our superpower, our wheelhouse, and what we do. Welcome to Planet Prosper. That's just what we do. And so if you'd like to explore how we can help you with that, go ahead and book a, a complimentary breakthrough call by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash chat. That's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash chat. It'll give us an opportunity just to have an honest conversation. We'll lift up the hood, the hood on your business and look at where you're at, where you want to go. And if we can help you create a breakthrough and help you bridge the gap, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like. If we can't, just like we talked about today, if we have something else that's better, or if someone else is a better fit for you, by all means, we'll also make those kind of recommendations as well. 
Either way, though, our goal on that call is that you leave that call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we're going to have some fun. Unless you're not a very fun person, then we won't. But we'll see about that. (laughs) I guess that one's on you, depending on how fun you are. That being said, though, we'd love to be of service to you. If that's something that you think would be of value to you, you need to be a 100% commission residential mortgage pro doing 70 basis points or higher in your comp plan. And you need to have the prerequisite of wanting to add at least $100,000 or more to your annual income in the next 12 months or less. If you meet all that criteria, book your call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash chat. And let's see what we can do to serve you to your breakthrough and serve you to the next level in success in your career. Also, If you've gotten value from today, maybe some valuable insights you didn't have before listening, please do subscribe to our podcast wherever you happen to be getting it so you don't miss any future episodes. As well, thank you in advance for sharing this episode with your colleagues and your peers. Sharing is definitely caring. And if you feel like we deserve it, and only if you feel like we deserve it, we'd love for you to also submit a five-star review just to share your feedback. We love feedback. So please do, if indeed you feel like we qualify for such. And it also helps us reach more mortgage pros when you share your feedback. So again, thank you in advance for that. So Penny, we did it, my dear. Thank you for the awesomeness you bring. I so appreciate you. Thank you so much. So happy to be here. And it is always a pleasure to be co-piloting with you, my dear. So thanks again for all the brilliant downloads. We talked today about how to breed loyalty with your realtor partners in particular. And now it's a matter of taking action on these ideas. Remember, the more we grow, the more our income grows. Don't just go to the next level. Grow to that next level. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace, everybody. Thanks for hanging with us.